Hello everyone, I'm Dan, and recently I released Elsob Relight, so how's that whole thing doing? And more broadly, what do I think of the new creator store, and what should be done about it? So I'll start with Eltob Relight, and I'll cut to the chase. It was a massively successful launch, and I am so blown away, I guess. Like, it exceeded every single one of my expectations. You guys absolutely loved it. Like, it went viral on social media. It's now number four on the trending tab on the creator store thing, which is amazing, and I have already earned thousands of dollars. I really don't do this for the money, like... If it was any indication before, because I was making plugins in a marketplace that was fundamentally unprofitable, but that's now money I can reinvest into the next plugin, and it's also stuff I can reinvest in my hobbies and invest in my family, which is really cool, and I don't know, I'm just really grateful. <laughs> it's really weird to think about how it's so successful, even despite all of the technical issues, and despite the fact that the creator store is actually rather imperfect. A lot of people internationally or at a younger age have been locked out from it. That has cut me off from a fair bit of my audience, which I do lament, and I'm really, I'm really fighting the fight to make sure that Roblox know that, and that they actually do something about it. But, I mean, in spite of all those factors, the fact that it has happened this successfully, it boggles my mind. Like, I did not expect it... I mean, I expected it to be successful, I'll be clear about that, but I did not expect it to be this successful. So I think it's clear that the people who Eltob Relight was targeted at absolutely love the product, and I'm very grateful for that. But I'm not going to sit here and just talk about how great Eltob Relight is, because there were some blemishes, and I think those need to be talked about as well. If you've been around on the dev forums at all, you will have known that somebody did try and make a copy of Eltob Relight, really quickly after it was launched and that was a whole drama and I really don't have anything more to say than what I've already said about it except please don't reply to that guy's thread. They deserve to have the space to promote their own stuff rather than to have a really hot topic drama. We have a whole development discussion section for that so just take it over there, right? But beyond that I think really the main concern was that people outside of Eltob Relight's specific niche didn't really see the value of it and complained a little bit that I didn't add more features or offer a broader range of features that I'd really focused in on just like a, a few things. I mean to address that, I actually went out and I talked to developers about why do you use the things that I make, right? Do you use it because they do the most amount of things? And I mean, the response was universally. I just got quoted back, no, of course not. I use your things because they're really well put together and that's what's valuable about them. So with Relight, it's just a case that instead of going for the most possible features, I just spent a really long time in the product development lifecycle. I mean, I started work on Relight well over a year at this point. Uh, I would originally had the idea because I was struggling with Celestial Body Dragger, and I went to a bunch of other developers, talked about the idea for a bit, then made a prototype of it. I even uploaded a video of the prototype to YouTube where it got more positive reception, people saying they would love this. I think it even got shared around internally at Roblox, but don't quote me on that because it's all unverified. Then I uh, worked on another interaction mode above that and spent a bunch more time polishing the specific presentation of them, making sure, you know, what part of the screen was the right place to put the tools in and what was the correct layout and then the layer of visual polish on the top of that, integrating it with like Fusion and all this other technology I've built over the years, packaging it up into a nice plugin framework and then publishing it. It was a whole process and it took a long time. That's what I think people find the value in that enjoy using Eltop Relight, and I plan to continue on that path into the future. I understand that it's not for everyone, that some people really just do value more features, but generally my philosophy here is that including more features does not necessarily make something more valuable, because if the features are horrible to use or impossible to find, or just a vertical learning curve so you can't even make use of them anyway, then they may as well just not be there. So I think I made the right call with Eltob Relight to really just index in on a few very carefully decided interaction modes, just whittling it down from a bunch of ideas. I know that it means on the box there's a lesser number of features and maybe someone else will make a version that has 100 interaction modes or something, but when you get my stuff I think you're paying for the design. At least that's the feedback I get, so... That's what I'm going to continue working on. Other than that piece of feedback though, everyone just loved it, right? The UI design, they ate that up. They really loved the way I did the announcement and everything. I got tons of positive feedback. And so I'm going to try and do that again in the future. I think that this was a massive success. So let's step away from talking about Eltob Relight now, because I want to talk a little bit more about the creator store as a whole. 
And I kind of alluded to this before, but the Creator Store, while it's better than it was before, it's definitely not perfect, and there are definitely some glaring omissions that do need to be addressed. You'll notice that alongside that product announcement, I had made a bunch of promises about advocating more for international creators, and that's really because of the new Stripe payments processing pipeline. They can't support as many countries around the world anymore, and of course, Roblox don't yet implement other things like regional pricing or purchasing power parity, which are all things that are really essential for developers around the world. I really think these things are important. I think that it's really important to be able able to get things out to as many people as possible around the world and to make sure they can actually afford it for the level of income in their country. That stuff is important and I'm kind of bummed it's not there. But of course that itself is not the whole story. I was actually taking a look at the Access Anywhere data, which I'll make a separate video about. But one of the things I noticed is that the number one country that people come from is Russia. And Russia, obviously there's geopolitics there, they've been sanctioned economically. So those people are just completely locked out of the Roblox ecosystem now, and Russia's not a small country either. So I think that earnings as payment is another really big point of focus, because you shouldn't have to cash out to a bank account just to pay it back into Roblox. It makes no sense, right? When you earn money on Roblox, you should be able to use your earnings to invest in your craft, no matter where you come from, right? We want to be as enabling as possible. Now you'll notice in that statement there that I said earnings as payment rather than paying for plugins with Robux. And there's actually a lot of nuances in this discussion. In particular, one suggestion I heard was that you should still be able to price your plugins in Robux if you choose. You should be able to choose between USD or Robux. And I mean, I understand for like some products, the Robux pricing worked better because it was more of a micro payments system. The payouts were very, very small. The plugins weren't considered to be worth very much, but it just wouldn't have worked, right? Like USD is a completely different set of expectations to Robux. Robux was very much disconnected from the reality of how much it cost to assemble a plugin, how much it cost for people's labor and time. And so I think that pricing in Robux really, it just needed to go in the bin. I think that the system needed a hard reset and this new creator store, I think will provide it. However, just because I'm against that specific idea doesn't mean that I'm against the whole thing. I actually think a really good way of doing it would be for any devexable earnings from any of your games or UGC or even other plugins could then be used as a credit, which could then discount or totally pay for any plugins in the creator store. So as an example of that, if you earned 3000 Robux from a game that could then translate into a 10 US dollar discount at DevX rates. By tying it to the DevX rate like that, it still basically functions the same as cashing it out, but you don't have to touch the global payments processing system, which means you don't have to worry about all these regional considerations. It can just all work in platform nice and tidy for all the same people that it used to. So if there was one thing that I would say the creator store team should focus on next, it would be you should be able to take your earnings and pay for something with them. I think that the fact you can't do that is a glaring oversight. I think a lot of people are rightfully upset about that. And I totally agree. It needs to change because there are too many people locked out. There's too many under 18s or people from, you know, economically challenged areas of the world. There are many different economic situations around the world. We may as well just normalize for all of them by allowing this stuff to stay on platform. With all that being said though, I absolutely do not intend to just sit around and wait for Roblox to do something about it because these are important issues. I actually really strongly believe that international creators are the powering force behind Roblox. I mean, back when I was working on Lua Learning with Zach, something we noticed about the player base was that it was disproportionately Brazilian. And that's something we hadn't considered, which was really cool and definitely something unexpected. I think that experience really showed me that Roblox is so much more international than any of us white English people ever acknowledge it is. And it's really, really important to make sure we don't forget that as we move forward through all of these issues around creator compensation and stuff like that. So in acknowledgement of the fact that these are important issues, I started the Access Anywhere program. It's something that I'm doing independently of Roblox because I'm not going to sit around and wait for them to acknowledge the international community or whatever. I'm just going to do something myself because it's important enough that I think something needs to be done about it now. So Access Anywhere, as I've talked about before, it's this program where you can just apply and I'll give you my stuff totally for free. And um, really the idea of the program is just, I wanna give my stuff away to people who couldn't otherwise get it. It's no lost sales for me, right? Because you can't get it anyway. So what's the point in being all cagey about it? Like I may as well just 
get my stuff into your hands so it can help you, so that you can have a good time. Because what's the point in doing anything else? So as I sort of semi alluded to before, that's been going very successfully. There's been a fair number of signups, which is both a good thing and a bad thing. Like it's a good thing because I'm helping a lot of people. It's a bad thing because these people need the help in the first place. So, you know, make of that what you will. At the end of the month, I should be able to give pretty much everyone a product key, which is really, really positive. It means that you guys get the tools that you want and you can then use that to make really cool stuff and the world will be a better place. So I'm really looking forward to that. Please at me with all the cool stuff you create because you guys create so much cool stuff. It blows my mind. Um, but other than that, I'm really, really positive about the whole Access Anywhere program. If you didn't know about it before, there will be a link in the description where you can learn more about it. And yeah, I'm just really chuffed to see that so many people have discovered it. Anyway, that should be all of the main points. I am making another video at the end of the month about the data from Access Anywhere. So that'll be going into, you know, what countries are people coming from and what's the reasons why the creator store are mainly broken, like evidentially and all the other stuff. So I'll be making a video on that at the end of the month and just sharing all those findings. But other than that, I don't think there's really anything else for me to say at the moment. We just have to see how everything pans out in the near future. So that's about it. I've been Dan and I will see you all next time. Have fun.